Hello everybody, it's Khalif PvP bring another video. This time we're gonna look at Paladins. For those of you that don't know, Paladins is the next newest iteration of the hero shooter genre. Uh, this time it's by High Res Studios, the same guys behind Smite. And essentially, the way I look at it, it's the free-to-play version of Overwatch. So what I mean by free-to-play Overwatch, I'm talking a little bit facetiously of course. Essentially, there's a lot of characters that you see a lot of similarities. For example, here's Barrick, aka Torbjorn, with his turrets right here and Molten Core turret right there. Uh, you have Farah, <laughs> essentially, with her rocket launcher and her thrust. You have D.Va in Ruckus, where the dual fire kind of slow moving cannon, as well as the hover that D.Va gets. But it's a little bit unique from from Overwatch. I, I really don't want to compare this game to Overwatch too, too much. Uh, in that you can also build cards. Each of these characters can have a unique build. So no two barracks will play the same. No two Victor, who's the newest character that's unlocked, will play the same. So, so it does have a little bit of uniqueness. And I'll talk about that later in the, in the, in the video. So the character diversity, you get kind of grouped into four classes. So you have your protector. These are your kind of tanks. You have your blasters. These are kind of your AOE area denial classes. You have your strikers, kind of like your assassin, uh, single target. And then you have your fighters, which are your essentially up in your face kind of uh, people. So now let's talk about the card system. The card system essentially how Paladins sets itself apart from the likes of Overwatch, TF2, or any other hero shooter that's out there. Essentially, each character can build itself differently depending on the situation. So no two characters that you run with will play the same. So for example, let's take Beric, aka Torbjorn. Uh, you know, it's all about these turrets. And but in addition to the turrets, you also have these barricades. So let's assume that you want to be more of a turret friendly uh, barrack, right? So what you can do is essentially pick up cards that will increase your turret. So we can pick up exposed that gives true size to allies. We can pick up field deployed that deploys faster. We can pick up uh, first aid kit when the turrets get de destroyed, it leaves behind health. Um, we can pick up the likes of um, healing station, which you know, if you're if you buy your turrets, you gain health. And then finally, you can pick up another turret one when uh, you know when when the turrets aren't deployed, it cools down. So now you're a big turret friendly guy. In addition to that, you can increase these as you see fit. So by default, you have five cards, so they take up five slots right here in the bottom. You can have up to essentially. 12 power points, so to speak. So what you can do is, um, for example, let's say you want to get more health out of your healing station, you hit this button, and you can rank it up to 160 health, which is four times power. So now, instead of taking up five, it, it's going to take up eight over down here. So now you can say, you know what, I want more health when it gets destroyed. So we bump that up, so it goes to four, and then bump up another. So again, in addition to just having the same set of cards, each character, each playthrough, you can kind of change the the outcome of this card. So you can play it four, one, three, it's so on and so forth. So now let's look at the game modes. There's two game modes right now that are out. Uh, one is payload, very generic. It's uh, you have a payload in the middle, you get next to it, and you move the payload. Very similar to again Overwatch and TF2's payload mechanism. Um, the maps are pretty uh, pretty good. Um, they seem a bit too short in my opinion, at least for the payload ones. Um, and the biggest complaint I have about the maps is that they they seem to have a lot of choke points, at least the ones that I've played, where it's either you're going to run through X, Y, and Z point and get held up at you know the last point, or the some of the maps are you're not even going to get the first point unless you're really really good. So overall, I think maps need a little bit of tweaking. Uh, to do but other than that it's you know 
everything else is nice on it. Uh, I can't really think of any other negative that would hold me back. But and especially for a free-to-play game, I, I don't I don't hold too much of it back. In addition to that, as I mentioned previously, uh, this is still in closed beta, so a lot of things might change. A lot of the designs obviously going to change with, with, with feedback. So I'm not too worried about the map outcome. Uh, the only thing that kind of um, I'm somewhat bothered by is the fact that there's a lack of support classes. Now, some of it is good because it means that you know the team with a support class isn't going to steamroll like i've seen that in tf2 and overwatch where if one of the teams has a healer it's just guaranteed win pretty much uh so it eliminates that one but at the same time i've seen where essentially you're so low on health the only way in this game to really get health is by killing opponents and they drop health packs so i've, I've seen situations where you're low on health and there's really no way for you to get health back other than just jumping in the thick of things. Some people might like it, some people not. Not. Um, I'm, I'm on the latter camp where I, I'm not really a big, big fan of it. So the next game mode is probably my favorite. It's called Siege. It's essentially a mix of payload and capture point. So what happens is in the beginning of the game, you have to run to a randomly generated capture point. Uh, you capture it and whichever team captures it gets a payload that they have to deliver to the opponent's base. The reason I really like this game mode is unlike payload where you know you're attacking or defending, you have to pick essentially classes that are dynamic, right? You can't just go, you know what, I'm gonna kind of camp this spot and shoot at anybody that comes in here. You have to kind of be able to pick a character that is both capable of you know, pushing a payload or defending the control point or vice versa. So I really like this game because of dy this dynamic nature. However, the only negative that I really have about this game mode is the fact that it is really, really long. Uh, well, compared to at least payload. Uh, each time you capture a control point, you get one point. And then delivering the payload to another location gets you one point. However, if the opposing team stops you from essentially getting getting your payload to, to the base, they get a point. Right, and whoever I think the best out of seven, so I think you need essentially five points to win the match. So it's best out of I guess eleven. Uh, whoever has the majority of the points wins. So it's a really long game mode, and it's not really long in terms of time. It's just you're you're playing the same map. There's no map changing. You're playing the same map, different control point, but same map, and it, it to me gets a little too uh, too boring for my taste. Alright, my thoughts on this game. Now keep in mind folks, again, this is still in closed beta. It's still in very much early stages of beta, so it's not really um, set in stone or anything like that. There's definitely big, big, big opportunities for it to change. But generally speaking, my thoughts on this game. I really enjoy it in terms of it being a free-to-play game. It's easy for somebody to pick up and quickly jump in and kind of know roughly what to do. Um, the only thing that I'm kind of going to be hesitant on is the whole card system itself. Now, even though the card system is really good, because it's really unique, to me it opens up a possibility of uh, pay to win. Right now, I say it as a possibility, not necessarily that it's going to be or anything like that. I also don't want to be like a doom and gloom or anything like that. But I have to acknowledge it. Where essentially, you can get, or you, there, there's a possibility rather, for you to be able to get decks of cards, essentially get cards from these 
these loot boxes. We, we already have that right now where you get a loot box for winning, for leveling up, etc, etc. And you get your cards out of that. So what I fear is the ability where you have these really strong cards with really low level uh, drop chance. And people are essentially just playing with these loot boxes in, in hopes of getting this really, really strong card. So what, what essentially that means is two people who are similarly skilled, one person will end up winning because they had that really strong card, whereas the other person lo loses because they didn't have that card. So that one I'm a little hesitant on. Other than that, I think any of my other reservations uh, will be addressed in in the beta and open beta time frame. Largely, again, as I mentioned, the maps seem to have a lot of choke points. Uh, you see it right now where we're trying to push this point, but it's just uh, there's a lot of places where we, we kind of got to get bottlenecked into. So I, I think those things are going to be fixed up. Uh, the lack of support classes. That one can uh, kind of go either way. People, they can decide that, you know, this is more of an offensive game. We don't really want one team to win because they had a support class, or we don't want one team to lose because they didn't have a support class, and kind of make the support classes more along the lines of uh, kind of offensive support. But uh, again, I'm not really too, too worried about that. Anything else? Uh, I think uh, I think they will be able to address in the in the time for open beta, um, and definitely since it is free to play, I definitely think everybody should kind of at least check it out. Definitely has a lot of potential for uh, for long term growth. So with that being said, folks, that is kind of the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys like the video, do, please do like and subscribe. If you want me to uh, kind of do more videos on this, let me know, and I'll definitely uh, put some video time in because it's definitely a fun game. But until next time, it's Khalif PvP. Peace.